There were two things they told me when I first got this. They said, uh, always put it in a cool, dry place whenever you're not using it. And I thought that was a joke, because what's a camper if you can't take it outside? And they said, also, never cover it with a tarp. Now, although they told me not to put a tarp over the top of it, I have to do something to keep the rain out. But I did, uh, got the little bit of space in between. I've got some cardboard tubes in here holding the tarp away so it can breathe a little bit. And I'll be, I'll be getting some PVC and try and do this in a, construct some kind of a skeleton so uh, when I pull a tarp over it, it will, uh, it, everything will stay in place. These tend to move around a little bit when the wind blows. When I first got it, it was in, uh, or I guess it was January or February. I was planning a vacation in March and uh, brought it home, popped it up, and we left the, the top up for about two weeks while we were experimenting with it and playing with it and trying uh, uh, find out where we're going to put food and different things for a little vacation because uh, the end of March um, and April area that's the only time we can shut down the store for a couple weeks and and not miss a lot of business so uh, we had it popped up and two weeks about two weeks after that we were getting ready to go I lowered the top back down and realized that the air conditioner had sank down into the roof a little bit and made a, a concave around it so if it was to rain water would have seeped in around the air conditioner if it didn't have a really good seal so I took it back to the, where I bought it and they replaced the top under warranty and I asked them not to put the air conditioner back on because this is a, a um, an off-road camper and where I intended to go there wasn't going to be a plug anyway and I get it was about two three weeks after that when I, I went to pick it up and they had put the air conditioner back on top and to make me feel better about it they offered to put an electric lift uh, electric winch and that way you know I don't I didn't I wouldn't have to crank the handle to get it up and uh, I went ahead and I agreed to do that uh, they did it at a, a very very cheap price you know that I paid for the for the unit they kept the original parts and I drove away and I was happy for a little bit and then I realized that the air conditioner was falling back into the ceiling. So I put in some bracing to prevent it from getting as bad as it did the first time. And that seemed to work. That held, that held up pretty well. And so we had it setting up for another couple of weeks, trying to prepare for another opportunity to take vacation. And then I realized that the top wasn't going up all the way. Um, and since it wasn't going up all the way, I couldn't put the door in place. So I ended up taking it back. And it sat there again for another, oh, I guess two or three weeks. And I went back to pick it up. And uh, it still didn't go up all the way. And I didn't know what the problem was at the time, but the mechanic, uh, the, the head of the mechanics there that, that do the repair on these things, adjusted uh, little wheels that, that sit underneath. So what the mechanic did is move each, each corner has, each corner of the, the cables. Each cable corner, each, each cable has one of these wheels. It's a, it's a, a wheel up in there that the cable rides on. Um, move that pin over here so that that moved that wheel over 
which tightened up the cable just a little bit. And uh, so all the cables come into this this little central unit right here. Uh, and whenever this screw is turned, it moves. This, there's a nut right here. So whenever that screw is turned, it draws this, this down this way and raises the top. But the thing, thing I didn't realize whenever uh, whenever I allowed him to do that is that he didn't put the thrust bearing on. So the, the thing about the thrust bearing on these, the thrust bearing is right here. And the entire, entire weight of the top is uh, on this rod. And the, as long as the thrust bearing is right here, the, the rod is being pulled this way by the weight of the top. And as, as that nut comes this way, all that weight's being pulled that way, right? But what he did whenever he put the power winch on here, he left the, the thrust bearing off. And that in turn put all the weight on this shaft and it pushed it. It was pushing it against this end, which has no bearing at all. And what it did was actually bend this shaft. So every time it was it was trying to turn, it would hit it would hit this uh, the floor. And I had put uh, I had put a charger on the battery because it looked like the battery wasn't strong enough to turn it. And I left it there overnight, but my battery charger didn't turn itself off and it actually blew up the battery. So whenever it blew up the battery, I, I had no, uh, no power to be able to lift this thing. And whenever I was, uh, when I was trying to manually uh, uh, lift it up, the end of the the end of the thing where the where the handle would fasten into broke off. So after that broke, so after that broke, I was kind of stuck. I didn't have the original parts to switch back and. Uh, the the power lift was just there and and blocking me from getting anything else done so i had to order a new uh, a new bracket of course whenever i ordered that i didn't realize there's a plate right here that it, the the thrust bearing is supposed to push against you know, it rests against that, and this plate takes the weight of the top also. So I had to make another plate for that. And while I was at it, I had noticed there was a, a, a dent on the inside where, where the original thrust bearing was being pulled through the hole. So from the factory, it was bad as well. Or bad design. This is this is fairly thin material to be able to hold the a thousand pounds of weight, which that's what the top ends up being because of the the top itself. You have to tension the canvas. So they said it was about a thousand pounds. Now there, there is a way that you can have a power lift, and you, if you see right in here, those are teeth, and that would be for a chain. So the power lift could be mounted below, below the this this mechanism, 
and a chain connected between them and that way uh, the way the bearing wouldn't be an issue bottom line is if you get one of these campers and they want to put a power lift on here make sure that they have a thrust bearing if it doesn't have a thrust bearing you're going to be in for a whole lot of trouble Who'd have thunk it? <laughs>